Pip Pip Tally Ho, Jules Guides here. One of my favourite squares here is uh, Charterhouse Square. Back in the 14th century, there's a fella called Walter Manny founded this Carthusian monastery here. That bit over there has been rebuilt in Tudor times because after the dissolution of the monasteries, King Henry VIII made them take down all this stuff. So those buildings over there are still pretty old from Henry VIII's times, but, but they were built with the same stones and bricks that the rest of the monastery was made out of. And you can still see this uh, wall here is original, part of the original 14th century monastery. And this gate here is original as well. And that's the gate against which John Houghton, who was a prior here, had a quarter of his body nailed. Um, after refusing to swear an oath uh, for the act of succession for King Henry VIII, you know, to do away with the Catholic Church. And they hung, drew and quartered him. What's the, what's the past tense of hang, drawn? They hanged, drew and quartered? They hanged, drew and quartered him? Or they hanged, drew and quartered him? There, nailed it to the top. Hello. Hello, Julian. How are you doing? Welcome <laughs> to the London Charter House. Thanks very much. Well, the history of the Charterhouse covers almost 700 years. And it's a rather complicated history, but there are four main periods. 1348, we start with the Black Death. So this, where we are now, was a plague pit. And there are at least 5,000 bodies buried under here. Right now? This, in 1348, was open fields. What the Manny who bought this land applied permission to Pope Clement VI that they could start a Carthusian monastery here. In 1611, a commoner like you and I, I think you're a commoner, How I'm certainly very, very common. How dare you? Um, Thomas Sutton, who was the richest man in England, bought the uh, Charter House with a view to housing a school for poor boys and a charity house for elderly men who'd fallen on hard times. And for over 400 years, Thomas Sutton's charity has resided in the Charter House. This is his coat of arms. All oh, right, are you a brother? You're not one of these, are you? You're, yes, I you're, am. You're, you're, oh, well, you're, you're not one of the elderly men, you're one of the poor boys. Um, uh, I'm going into my second childhood now. <laughs> For how many rooms? 33, do you 33 say? Rooms. 33 rooms. Ro Robbie 30. Williams has 48, I think. Ah, well. But he still needs to dig a bit. Yes, basement. well, if he wants to so. downsize, he can come here. <laughs> you have to be over 60 years of age, you have to be single. I, either divorced, uh, widowed, separated, never married. Now we, we are meeting lady brothers, that's it, lady brothers. They're not sisters. Do any of the lady brothers get with the male brothers, thereby not being single anymore? Each of them would have to leave, so it's better to live in sin <laughs> within the child house than marry and give up your accommodation. Nearly reach the sky, then like my dreams they fail. This is where you live. <laughs> yes, only if you're terribly aristocratic would you be allowed through these arches. I've looked everywhere. I'm forever blowing bubbles. Well, historically, this is the most important room in the house. It's 1558. And up at Hatfield House, a great aristocratic mansion just north of London, a young Princess Elizabeth is under house arrest there. And she's told that her half-sister Mary has died and she's advised she's to go to the Tower of London to prepare for her coronation. And she says, not in this so many words, I ain't going there. I've been to the Tower of London, I almost lost my head. She decides to come here to the Charter House, not through the front door, but the back door. And she holds her first court in this room. Queen Elizabeth would have stood here, looked out of this very window, and at that roof there. Amazing, isn't it? This is excellent through here. Now, you may not know this, but um, oh, it smells very authentic through here. Isn't this beautiful? These walls on the side, these are from the original monastery. Um, but the ones up there, the roof, was created later on in the, in the Tudor period. This is actually where, in football or soccer, we get the whole offside rule and also the throw-in rule. It, 
originated here in the Charter House. Because the kids, they used to have these massive football games down here with like 20 a side. And the ball might fly out through these windows and a little kid in the lower forms would have to go out and go and retrieve the ball. And the only way you could get it back in through these windows was to throw it over his head through the window. And that's where we get the throw-in rule from. The kids would hang around just around the corner here. And when the ball came down here, they'd kind of goal hang and they'd, they'd, they'd nip out of the last minute, grab the ball and throw it into the goal. And uh, so they had to put an end to this. So they had to create the offside rule. You're not allowed to be forward of a certain place. All came from games of football that took place inside this incredibly narrow cloister. Quite amazing, because these were all the cells. The cells, what cells? cells. The cells for the, for the monks. So the door would have been here. We can't go into the actual cell, which was behind there, where the monk who would have taken a vow of silence it was called a hermetic monk, a hermetically sealed monk. <laughs> and, and, and so the lay people would bring food for them um, without disturbing them or talking to them. They'd put it in there and then he could take his food, a bit of a strange life, and then eat his food. And then if he needed to do a poop, then he'd, uh, he'd just leave it there, <laughs> in a chamber pot, presumably. <laughs> and then these uh, people would take it away and they'd never have to talk to anybody. Sounds all right, actually or see anybody, or be seen. This whole cloister would have been on all four sides of the square and about three times as long as this. So I imagine they must have had some pretty epic games of football down here. Quite amazing. I'm gonna get lit up when the lights go up in London. I'm gonna get lit up as I've never been here. And we have this fantastic vain glorious built at the time of James I. That's a visual of our chapel. The preacher's preaching, and the third elderly man, he's got his Bible open, but he's fallen asleep. <laughs> the bosses are pointing and saying, he's not getting his supper tonight. He's going to stand in the corner. It just reminds me of being in my school, all the board school kids just sitting here. Look at that graffiti. Yes. Can, can you imagine a little boy sitting here and listening to a very long sermon? His name was Labas. He writes his name here, facing directly the master of the charity, the headmaster of the school, he really was chancing it by writing his he name. He probably had somebody as tall as Julian sitting in front of him like this. That's true, yeah. actually. Yeah, no, wearing, wearing a top hat or something. No, it'd be all little boys. And guess what happened to him? Henri Vincent Le Bas, or Le Bas, born 1828, he ended up being preacher of the charity from 1871 to 1910. So the boy who never paid attention in chapel ended up being the preacher here. You will find me on the tiles. They've also got very beautiful gardens here, which are very popular, so uh, look out for their garden open days. What's the significance of these uh, dogs I keep seeing everywhere? The dog is a Talbot. It's extinct, but it was a popular dog at the time and is connected with the Sutton family. And if you come and look round, you will see lots of Talbots carved in stone, in wood, and you can buy one in the shop. We'll all be lit up as the Stratwells will be more much more. This is a great location for filmmakers. Downton Abbey. Uh, we've had horrible histories here. We've had the best one I liked was. Uh, Don't tell me, Jules Guides. No, oh, okay. Vampire Academy. Presumably, the chapel would have been here. After the dissolution of monasteries, they took down the monasteries and then built a house here until the Second World War when uh, a bomb struck and it knocked the house down. They started doing some digging around here and they didn't know where this Walter Manny guy was who, was who had founded the monastery. You see that little window there, which was called a squint and that squint would always point towards the high altar. And you can see there's a higher level. Yes, a slab. A slab, that's where the altar was. And then they said, OK, we know from royal records that Walter the Manny was buried at the foot of the high altar in this chapel. We know that because the king, King Edward III, all the royal family, including John of Gaunt and the Black Prince, came to his requiem mass here. And so they followed the line of that little squint and then they found a skeleton and they thought it could have been anybody except he had this uh, medallion on his chest, a lead buller. But we could read on the, this coin-like circle the seal of Pope Clement VI, the Pope that gave permission for this monastery to be established. We gave him a new slab and that lead buller is now in our museum. Thank you, Not Stephen. at all. Wonderful and to I hope, meet, yeah. I hope, I hope lots of people come and visit us. Well, they, they will. And if you want a tour of the Charter House with this most learned man, 
uh, they can just get in touch, can't they? And yes, and out. also we have a, a wonderful museum which is free, uh, and of course, why not combine both? Museum and a tour. Exactly, very highly recommended. And don't ask me for a tour of Charter House, because I don't do them. <laughs> you, can, you can ask him. Absolutely. Yeah. All the very best. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you want a private guided tour around London with moi, then you can just get in touch on my website, junesguides.com, where you can also find out more about me and even leave a generous donation via PayPal or become a Patreon if you want, whatever that is. So, see you next time, folks. Sing like anything, any sort of song makes you